So Elon Musk and the XAI team release Grok 3. I did a whole live stream covering it and testing out the Grok 3 live. So in this video, let's go over the biggest takeaways from the Grok 3 launch. And tomorrow I'll post a video on testing Grok 3 out, how will it perform compared to the other leading models. So first and foremost, it seems better than the O3 Mini High on things like the AIME and some of the other benchmarks that they put it through. And this is specifically the reasoning models. So that was the 2024 AIME, and this is the 2025, the brand new AIME. As you can see here, it's again, beating out O3 Mini High and the O1. So it's better than Gemini, DeepSeek R1, O1, O3 Mini high both the grok 3 mini reasoning and the grok 3 reasoning are both better so this is putting it kind of where we expect the o3 the full o3 model to be and all things considered this growth is kind of insane here in blue you see the rise of grok compared to the gpt's openai's model it catches up rather fast what's more is as far as we know grok 3 the reasoning model is its first reasoning model so it skipped sort of the o1 to o3 and with its first reasoning model got right up to the o3 again according to the benchmarks that might be a little bit off but it, it's it definitely surpassed the l1 i think this is kind of important because it kind of weighs in on a whole discussion about nvidia and gpus and scaling laws this is the largest compute cluster i believe in the world that's located in one space and they built it really fast as elon sometimes likes to joke it's like a speed running factorio in real life so colossus is a total of 200 thousand gpus the phase one took 122 days to get to 100,000 GPUs fully training synchronously from scratch. And then phase two is 92 days to expand it to 200,000 GPUs. So this is bigger than the other sort of projects by Google, OpenAI, Microsoft. And this does kind of seem to indicate if you have the capital to buy all those GPUs, then you can jump to the front of the line for building these AI models. Again, there's still a lot of tests to be done. We still have to see how well these models perform, all of that. But just from the initial results, assuming that the benchmarks are accurate, it, it does seem like there is no moat really it's just nvidia goes a burr gpus if you have enough gpus you get to build those big models and uh, saturate the benchmarks not only that but elon saying they're planning to 5x this thing right so they're going to build it out to 1 million gpus you get grok on the premium plus but there's also a new special tier called Super Grok, so it has guaranteed access to Grok 3 and unlocks the deep search and think. Think is sort of what makes it into the reasoning model. There's also a, a voice mode that some people have been testing out. Early testers have been, it sounds like they've been getting their hands on it. I haven't had a chance to do this yet. I did have a chance to test out the reasoning capabilities for about uh, an hour, an hour and a half. I was trying to do it live on this uh, live stream. Um, unfortunately, I was very tired. So I do want to hit it fresh again in the morning, but early results, I mean, I'm not ready to call it quite yet, but it does seem strong. It seems at least as good as the O3 mini high. If you recall, Dr. Kyle, the PhD physicist who was doing research into black holes and had the O1 preview write up the entire code that he used to do his uh, PhD dissertation, he joined the live stream and actually suggested this problem that he said he actually submitted it to humanity's last exam so he actually suggested this problem to to run through grok 3 it's a fairly complicated problem with sort of tons and tons of work that you have to do to show your work to get to the answer not the final answer that grok gave me was incorrect at the end of my live stream, we basically organized it so Dr. Kyle would start his own live stream and then I was able to kind of redirect my live stream to his. So he kind of picked up where I left off because at that point I was falling asleep and he was able to test a lot of the stuff with Grok 3. It does seem like when he attempted it, it did get the correct answer. So when he ran it through, Grok 3 did come up with the correct answer. Although some of the other models also came up with the 5.5 answer. So I plan to rewatch that live stream and see if they figured out what the issue was, because I would be interested to know where it went wrong and why. I also tested with my series of prompts where it has to create a snake game that plays itself and then create kind of a reinforcement learning agent to learn to play that game using PyTorch. So it created a kind of an advanced version of the snake game with a script to play itself. Pretty cool, nothing major. 
it did create the PyTorch reinforcement learning pipeline to, to train it how to play. And this was where there was like just a few issues. And I feel like it did an okay job. Here's where there's a few issues that kind of started breaking down. But at this point, it was a very much past my bedtime. And I wasn't really in that debugging, troubleshooting state of mind where I could have uh, continued. So I don't want to call it yet. I do want to take tomorrow, hit it with some hard prompts and kind of see where it lands. I want to finish watching Dr. Kyle's live stream tomorrow when I wake up and see kind of what he thinks of it because he hit it with some pretty difficult physics and, and science problems. But it really does feel like that XAI started with a, a late start. They started kind of a behind the pack, but they built up their, their hardware, their, their infrastructure beyond what everybody else has and now created a model that is very well, it might be the number one model that's available to us right now. Again, I'm not quite ready to call it, but for example, in the chatbot arena, the chocolate model, that was early Grok 3. So this is where people kind of uh, test two models side by side blindly. They don't know which one's which. They select the one that they like most. And, you know, chocolate reigned supreme. Here's the post from, you know, chatbot arena where all these LLMs duke it out. So they're saying that XAI early version of Grok 3, codenamed chocolate, is now the number one in the arena. So as you can see here, here's all the rankings. So as you can see, XAI and early version of Grok 3 is solidly in the number one spot. It's the first ever model to break the 1400 score. It's number one across all categories, a milestone that keeps getting harder to achieve. So that's after just under 8,000 votes. So it might shift up and down a little bit still, but again, it's, it's solid. Being number one across uh, all categories, that's a difficult feat to achieve. My early testing seems to show that it's again like 03 mini high. And again, I would need a lot more to kind of like say if it's better or worse, but it's in that sort of range. But you can see here, this version of Grok 3 overall, number one. Overall with style control is number one. It's number one at the hard prompts and hard prompts with style control. It's number one coding. It's number one at math. It's number one at creative writing. It's number one at instruction following. It's number one at longer query and number one at multi-turn. So another important thing to understand here is, so for example, for the AIME, so it's a high level math competition, you know, when we're looking at the O3 mini, the O1, when we're looking at Grok 3, they were all trained in 2024. So the data was collected in 2024. So when we're looking at the AIME for 2024, it is possible that maybe those results were in its data set that it was trained on. But now we have the results for the AIME 2025. So there's parts one and two and how those scores are calculated. So we're looking at the, the combination of both of those, kind of the average of those two. So the O3 mini high scores 86 on the AIME 2025. Again, we're fairly certain that this is not in its training data set. The O1 sort of a medium scores 79. I think that this might be one of the uh, better benchmarks that, that we have right now, specifically for testing these reasoning models. So here's the O1 at 79. Here's the O3 mini high at 87. So it's technically 86.5, so 87. And notice Grok 3 and Grok 3 mini both are above it at 90 and 93. So again, I had some early testing. It did some things right, some things wrong, but I just didn't have enough time to really fully stress test it and really fi figure out where it sits sort of like in my opinion for, for stuff that I tested on for my use cases. But at this point, I think we can safely say that uh, certainly it seems like a Grok 3 is now the new reigning king. Probably. We'll do a deep dive tomorrow, but at this point, it's kind of hard to deny it. The full announcement video was posted right before this one. Links below. The announcement video, they have a few sort of test cases they run it through. They also explain how they built that data center. If you were following that whole thing with, you know, if we needed GPUs, NVIDIA going up and down, you know, how the sort of the deep seek, how those models affected, how we thought about NVIDIA and GPUs and how important those sort of investments were. I think this provides some strong, solid arguments that the the demand for the GPUs will still be sky high. Again, just the idea that Elon is sitting on 200,000 of these and is planning to 5 exit to 1 million, I think that's sort of, that by itself is rather telling. I mean, this sort of progress that they have is definitely telling. And it seems like they're crediting the fact they have 10 to 15x more training, more compute than Grok 2. So the jump from Grok 2 
two to Grok three was a 10 to 15 X. I mean, that's another kind of a data point. So there's a lot more to come. Stay tuned. And without further ado, do you know where bad rainbows go? To prism. Funny, right? But don't worry. It's a light sentence. Just enough to give them time to reflect. Subscribe if you found this video enlightening.